The 2019 Hong Kong District Council elections were held on 24 November 2019 for all 18 district councils of Hong Kong. 452 seats from all directly elected constituencies, out of the 479 seats in total, were contested. Nearly 3 million people voted, equivalent to 71% of registered voters, an unprecedented turnout in the electoral history of Hong Kong. The election was widely viewed as a de facto referendum on the ongoing pro-democracy protests. The pro-democracy camp in conjunction with the localist groups achieved its biggest landslide victory in the history of Hong Kong, gaining control of 17 of the 18 district councils and tripling their seats from around 124 to about 388. The pro-democrats would also be able to capture 117 district council subsector seats in the 1,200 member election committee which is responsible for electing the chief executive of Hong Kong. Pro-Beijing parties and independent candidates won only 62 seats, a loss of more than 242 seats. All pro-Beijing parties suffered major setbacks and losses, including the flagship pro-Beijing party Democratic Alliance for the Betterment and Progress of Hong Kong, which received its largest defeat in history, losing 96 seats. Executive Councillor Regina Ip's New People's Party failed to obtain a single seat and was ousted from all district councils as a result. Dozens of prominent pro-Beijing heavyweights lost their campaigns for re-election, including Juniors Ho, a controversial anti-protest figure who had expressed support for the triads behind the mob attack in Wen Long on 21 July. In contrast, Many pro-democracy candidates who actively participated in the protests were elected, including convener of the Civil Human Rights Front Jimmy Sham. In July 2017, following a review of the numbers of elected seats for each district council having regard to local population forecasts, the Electoral Affairs Commission proposed to create 21 new elected seats across 10 district councils. Accordingly, the total number of elected seats for the 2019 elections increased by 21 from 431 to 452. Some pro-democracy district councillors accused the EAC of gerrymandering, stating that the borders of their constituencies were altered unreasonably to adversely affect their party's election prospects. EAC chairman Barnabas Fung responded that the changes were based purely on an objective calculation. Quote, Factors with political implications would definitely not be taken into consideration, Fung said. In April 2017, Occupy Central co-founder Benny Tai proposed the Project Storm strategy to win the majority of the district council seats for the pro-democrats in the coming election. He stated that by winning a majority of the some 400 district council seats, the pro-democracy camp could gain an additional 117 seats of the district council subsectors on the 1,200-member election committee which elects the chief executive. Tai believed that by making it harder for Beijing to manipulate the chief executive election, it would compel Beijing to restart the stalled political reform after its restrictive proposal was voted down in 2015 in the aftermath of the Occupy protests. Power for Democracy, a group that coordinated different parties and groups in the pro-democracy camp, worked with pro-democrats to identify suitable candidates for all 452 constituencies. The group also held rounds of non-binding primaries to select a candidate if more than one pro-democrat was interested in running in the same constituency. However, the camp still risked doubling up in about 30 constituencies. In mid-2019, the Carrie Lam administration pushed forward the Fugitive Offenders and Mutual Legal Assistance in Criminal Matters Legislation Bill 2019 to establish a mechanism that would allow the extradition of fugitives to any territory not covered by existing extradition treaties, including Taiwan, mainland China and Macau. The proposal's purported purpose was to fill a legal loophole that allowed a Hong Kong suspect involved in a homicide case not to be extradited to Taiwan in 2018. The proposed bill raised grave concerns from various sectors of society, including lawyers, journalists, businesses, 
as well as foreign governments, who feared the heightened risk that Hong Kong citizens, dissidents, and foreign nationals passing through the city without safeguards of the local courts could be sent for trial to mainland China, an authoritarian regime where courts are under direct Chinese political control. Starting from June, rounds of demonstrations were attended by hundreds of thousands of people. The government first suspended the bill and later proposed the withdrawal of the bill in September, which officially took place in October. The pro-Beijing parties, who were among the strongest advocates of the bill, worried that their support of the controversial bill as well as the abrupt U-turn would cost them votes in the upcoming district council elections and the next year's legislative 